Now that we understand some of the basics of laminating, we will use those techniques to construct a mold or tool that may be reused to create multiple finished parts. Unlike making the actual finished part, where precision and the overall weight and appearance are critical, with the tool, the primary goal is to achieve an excellent surface finish, good dimensional accuracy, and overall strength and durability to support the number of parts required. First, we applied and sanded several coats of sandable gray primer until we achieved the desired surface finish. We also constructed a support frame made of pine wood. This frame gives us an ending point for our tool, unlike an actual part where we would want to extend the laminate beyond the desired dimensions and then trim it later. The frame is as large as possible in order to maximize the flange or flat part around the model, which will be useful later when forming the part. We drew a line around the inside of the frame to provide an ending point for our resins. We don't want the laminate to protrude above the support frame as this would require unnecessary trimming to create a flat back surface. Now it is time to cut and fit our pieces of fiberglass. To make the laminating process proceed quickly, we want to pre-fit all of the pieces of our fiberglass before mixing the resin. First, we connected the mold frame temporarily. We are going to use a combination of 6 inch, 4 inch, 3 inch, and 2 inch fiberglass tape. All of these tapes are a 10 ounce fiberglass with a plain weave. Fiberglass tapes are excellent for smaller jobs because they reduce the amount of cutting required and have bound edges to prevent the fabric from unraveling. For larger molds, obviously the large rolls of cloth are ideal. We begin to fit each strip of fiberglass in our mold and mark where we want to cut it. Then, using a straight edge and a utility knife, we cut each piece as shown. Scissors also work well for cutting fiberglass. It is a matter of personal preference. Note that we are fitting our layers of fiberglass prior to applying our release agents. This is done to prevent us from disturbing our carefully applied release agents and thus requiring possible reapplication. Our goal, especially for the first layer, is uniform coverage with no overlapping joints. Although a tool doesn't need to be as precise as a finished part, the more carefully we fit our fiberglass, the easier it will be to build the mold. For the ends of our model, we use paper to trace the outline of the desired shape. Then we cut the shape with scissors, retrace, and cut this shape to create a cardboard template. This template can now be used to guide our utility knife when cutting the fiberglass. Next, we arrange some strips around the perimeter of our model in order to secure our tool to the mold frame. We use partial cuts in the fiberglass pieces in order to fit them around corners and other difficult contours. Finally, we cut small pieces to apply around the corners of the model to reinforce those areas. Now we're ready for cutting the second layer, which we build up at a 90 degree angle from our first layer. Orientation of the cloth isn't as important for a mold as it is for a part, but it is usually good practice to at least alternate the direction of the fiberglass with each layer. We're also using wider tape at the perimeter to overlap the underlying layers. It is not required to have the first layer underneath in order to fit the second layer, but we're doing it this way in order to help you better visualize the construction of this tool. For complete information on the products you've seen here, plus free access to over 30 other videos featuring topics such as silicone rubber mold making, polyurethane casting, building fiberglass laminate molds, forming composite parts, and more, please go to freemansupply.com and visit our extensive video library.